Good afternoon everybody, Tyler here with Boost Junkie Media and today I'm going to bring you a video. We're going to talk a little bit about the Fox body. Uh, I know I've shown you the car but I haven't really made a whole lot of content on it or really any. Uh, there have been a few things that have happened so we're going to talk a little bit about that and kind of tell you what's coming up in the next few days here with the car. So let me just kind of recap what's been going on. I've kind of been going through the car, um, checking things out. I pulled the dash out of the car. Just wanted to see some of the wiring behind the dash, see how everything looked. Everything looked really good. The car is in you know, pretty good shape as far as how it was set up and the wiring and everything. So that's really good. There's also been a few changes that I've been wanting to make um, that I've done. And a couple of them were in preparation for the track. So that's kind of what I'm gonna show you now. Um, so I guess we'll just kind of start there. So one of the first things we did here, so hopefully you can see this and it's not terrible as far as, okay, sorry about that. So we're back. So here's, I'm going to show you one thing that we've done. Um, hopefully you can see this in the video here. So this is the boost control solenoid that is on the car. Uh, this car is controlled by a Holly Dominator setup. And a lot of times with the, an aftermarket computer like that, people use a um, several different ways. They use a three-port MAC valve, a four-port MAC valve, or you can even go to a dual three-port setup where you have a plus boost and a minus boost valve. Um, this car had on it a three-port three valve. Basically what it does is divert boost from the source and put it onto the top of the dome of the wastegate, which helps hold the wastegate closed. That is limited in the amount of boost you can make because when your source is boost from the turbo, you can only make so much boost to put on the dome to hold the wastegate closed. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, to get around that, if you wanna stick with a three port, you can go to a external source. You can do like a CO2 tank or onboard air and that will do away with that because then if you need to put 40 pounds of, of pressure on the top of the wastegate in the dome to keep it closed, you can do that because you've got a full tank of air. I don't have onboard air yet at this time or CO2, so I am using boost from the turbo to hold the wastegate closed. So when you're doing that, you can go to a dual three port setup or a single four port and with uh, the help of my buddy Josh at Underground Garage, uh, we have set up this four port Mac valve here. And so basically what's going on here, so let me see if I can put you guys down here for a second and see if I can get some light on the situation. Put my, put my lighted headlamp on here. All right, so basically what's going on here as you can see this line right here comes from the turbo. So this has boost in it and it enters the in port right here on the, on the valve itself. Under normal conditions, that boost just goes straight through here and goes here, which this port is wide and goes to the bottom of two wastegates. This car does have two wastegates. So the bottom port on each wastegate is what goes to this. When the dominator tells the MAC valve to start making more boost to make more than spring pressure, what it does is it energizes the solenoid which connects the boost source coming in here up to here. This port here that my finger is on, same thing is wide, but it goes to the top of each wastegate. So that boost on the top of the wastegate or on the dome is holding the wastegate closed. And when you hold that wastegate closed like that, that's what allows the turbo to make more boost before the wastegate starts to open. Once the wastegate opens, it diverts exhaust, and that's when your, your boost levels out or you know levels off. Um, so that's kind of basically what's going on here in a nutshell. So you can see I redid that, redid the wiring on that. Um, looks pretty good, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out and I took it out and tested it. It does seem to work well. Um, my buddy Josh and I did, like I said, we, he did help me set it up and we did have some initial problems we were trying to go to the track last weekend with this new setup. Uh, it took us a little longer to get it working than we had hoped, so that didn't quite work out. But I am planning to go this coming weekend, this Saturday, uh, to Northeast Dragway down in Hertford, North Carolina. It is on an eighth mile track, but we will 
kind of see what it'll do in the eighth mile. You take this headlamp back off here. Um, so speaking of the track, I did make it to the track one time. I made it to VMP. Um, only ran it out the eighth mile. I only got one pass. We had some rain move in. I only got one pass on the car. I only ran it to the eighth mile because it was the car's first pass ever. I wanted to get some data, look at the data log, make sure everything looked good. And on that eighth mile pass, which was by no means a perfect pass, um, it was fairly low boost. Uh, I didn't come out of the hole on any boost. I didn't come out on the trans brake. I just foot braked it. And when the light went green, I just put it to the floor and took off. Uh, the car went 6.2 at 117 miles per hour in the eighth with that setup. Uh, like I said, by, by no means was it a perfect pass. Um, but overall, the car did really well. The log looked great. Everything looked perfect with the log. Um, the commanded boost is exactly what it did, and it leveled off. Fueling looked good. Timing looked good. Everything was really good with the car. So I tried to get another pass that day, but like I said, some rain moved in, and it just didn't wasn't really quite the right setup to try to make a, a faster pass. So this coming Saturday is the plan. Uh, like I said, Northeast Dragway. I'm going to try to make... Uh, make a at least an eighth mile pass see if we can't get it down into the the high to mid fives in the eighth mile um the other thing i did let me show you one other thing here might need my headlamp light back here okay so here's the other thing that we did so before here's the interior of the car and before put the wheel on here So before, I had two of these buttons that went in here like this. There was one. This green one is for the um, bump and for after the after you take off, after you launch, it is also the scramble button. And then I had another red one that went down here, which was the line lock. Well, this cord here around the wheel is kind of a pain in the butt when you're racing and you get to the end of the track and you turn the wheel and you've got this cord wrapping around the column. Um, it's kind of a pain, so to make it a little bit more manageable, I didn't really love having the line lock in the steering wheel. It didn't really need to be there. I didn't really feel like uh, the line lock is only used, you know, when you're doing your burnout, which you're not really going fast for, you're, you're stationary. So it wasn't really needed in the wheel. So what I did is I have relocated the um, line lock button to right here. So this is not my line lock. So in fact, this panel piece goes on here like that, just to make that a little bit cleaner. Okay, so this is now the line lock button. So when I pull up, I'll do my burnout, I'll push the brake pedal down, I'll hit that button. That locks the uh, brake lines basically for the front, keeps all the fluid going to the front brakes but lets the rear ones relax so that they aren't being held anymore. Um, you give it the gas, let it do its burnout, and then once you're done doing your burnout, you let go of the button and let the car roll out, you know, uh, spinning. Um, and you can kind of get a sense if it starts to hook as it's rolling out, you, know, you kind of get a sense for the grip of the track and the grip of the wheels, the tires. So that's what we did. So we've got that relocated down there. I did that work last night. Everything runs up and under the dash here along the side. This is uh, part of my loom right here. I left a little extra, and it runs up under the dash and up here uh, to go to where it wired in. So that part is done. Uh, I am still going to run just the single green wire here when I am running boop, uh, you know, doing the bump and running the scramble for this weekend. I am probably not going to be too worried about that. I am not um, planning to race for any you know real money or anything like that. This is just to to kind of go see what the car will do. So, yeah, so that is pretty much it with the car. Um, as far as I can think, uh, let's see. Overall, it is running really well. Everything's set up well. Um, you can see from the one track outing, you might see some of the wrinkles in the tire still. It, it had a pretty good set of uh, zebra stripes in the tire from where it wrinkled. Even though I didn't launch hard on boost, it still was enough that when it when the boost came on, it squatted, it wrinkled the tires. And this is the rear trunk battery setup. I did redo the, a little bit of this, 
redid some of these wires in here, uh, put new terminals on it and stuff. Um, yeah, so like I said, the car is ready to go. Uh, we'll see how, you know, how it does this weekend, and I will try to. I know last time when I was at the track, I didn't get any uh, real footage or anything of it. Unfortunately, it was kind of the first time with the car, and I was just focused on the car. Uh, this Saturday, I'm going to really try to focus on getting some in-car footage, uh, maybe some out-of-car out footage of the racing, and then maybe a little bit of footage at the actual track itself. Um... Yeah, so I don't think there's really anything else to talk about with it right now. Let me go ahead and spin this back around here. So, yeah, basically that's it with the car for right now. Like I said, stay tuned for more content to come with the car. Uh, Saturday track event down at Northeast Dragway in Hertford. We'll see what it does in the 8th. And stay tuned. I hope you like the uh, content that I've, a little bit that I've been giving you. There is more to come, so please give me a like and a follow on the channel. Throw me a comment if you want. Let me know, you know what you'd like to see, that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you later.